Van Blunt roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at one's tip. Ah, hello, everyone. Hello. And you're dandy, flandy, spandy, flandy, gobbly, 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 gobbly. Welcome to another Christmassy episode of It Crept from the 80s. And ooh. Ooh, are we getting close? We're getting close to the Christmas, the Christmas, the Christmas to end all Christmases, 2019, <laughs> the end of the decade. Uh, we're going into 2020, folks. That is that is wild. That is insane mm, to think. 2020. I, I believe it's another uh, year where. Uh, the weirdos say we're gonna all die and the world's going to end. So we got that going for us in 2020. You know, we can look forward to that and them trying to explain why the world didn't end and why nobody rose and all that stuff. <laughs> good, good times, good times. So this episode, uh, we are gonna talk about uh, sort of, uh, folks, do you remember the Christmas wish books from back in the 80s? In the early 90s it was they, they had Sears wish book they had there was there was a Montgomery Montgomery Ward's wish book there was wish books aplenty but we always got the Sears wish book I believe there was a JC Penney's wish book as well um, but uh, it was it was like a it was a huge deal you know you'd get it around uh, oh, maybe uh, September October and it was real thick. You didn't care about anything in the front of this book, really. It was all, all you wanted was to hit those toy pages near the end of the book. But it was still thick. And man, you were seeing your whole world in front of you. You're getting that pen, getting that pencil, ready to circle the things that you want so that your folks can see it and hopefully get it. Or you can say, hey bro, Santa, my man, you gonna hook me up this year? For the most part, I did get hooked up, but at a certain age in my life, man, the family sucked. Uh, there wasn't a single thing under that tree that I had asked for or that I wanted. Uh, it became very bizarre and I became very angry. <laughs> to the point where they would say, Chris, are you going to write your wish list this year? You know? And I'd say, what's the point? You know? I never get what I want. You give me this bullshit. <laughs> now, it may seem I'm seem like I'm, I'm very spoiled, but here's the thing. When you ask for something wicked cool and you get a dartboard... Something is something strange in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Especially when they know me. I am flesh and blood. They know who this Chris Seaver is. And I get a dartboard. I am one of the most non-athletic human beings in the world. Uncoordinated. I don't like sports of any kind. And I get a dartboard. Oh, you know what else I got one year? I got a, a basketball hoop to put on the garage so <laughs> you know i'm sure you got you guys can all relate at some point uh to things of that nature but the wish list so i'm talking about when i was still you know i was still in my eights nines tens elevens Things didn't start getting weird like that until I was like 13, 14. But everything before that, man, that was prime Christmas gold. That was prime 80s magic. So I was getting all sorts of dope things that I wanted. Not everything. And that is going to lead us to 
what the topic of today's show is, which is what is in your 80s wish list? Hmm? As an adult, as someone who still covets the 80s, loves the things they loved when they were little, and enjoys it now in their 40s, what have you, 50s, whatever it may be, late 30s, um, I'm in my late, I'm in, in my early 40s. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. But in my heart, I'm still 12 years old. So, as a 40-something, if you could open up a Sears wish book today and pinpoint the things that you would want from your childhood, that's what we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to open up a little can of nostalgia, a little book of nostalgia, and talk about the things that, as a... 42-year-old uh, that I would want back in my life uh, from the 80s. And maybe one day Santa will bring those special gifts to me. Or I'll just get them myself <laughs> at some point. Um, and I highly encourage all of you out there to please leave some comments and let me know as well. Because it's fun. I want to know. We're going to talk a little bit about nostalgia in general after this as well, because uh, I have some things to say and I have, I have some comments to make on that whole thing and how there's a lot of people out there who seem to poo-poo nostalgia. But let's get into the thick of the happiness, shall we? Mm -hmm. So, the first thing on my 80s wish list for modern times... <laughs> Um, I certainly have mentioned this before, but uh, Star Wars was huge. It's the first thing that I really knew in my life. It was everywhere. It was the prime time. I was born in 77, so Star Wars fever was everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, and as such, other than Tinker Toys, Baby Toys, things like that, um, Star Wars, that was my first awesome toy line that I had in my life and, and, and was huge, huge, huge. So um, I got a lot of stuff from the family, okay? But there were always pieces that they just wouldn't get. You know, I, I, I always talk about, well, they got me the Millennium Falcon, but they wouldn't get me an ad ad. You know, things like that. Well, they got me such and such, but they didn't get this because they thought that was a little too much. Weird back then, man. You know, when you look back, probably that Millennium Falcon was like 30 bucks. Something like that. <laughs> Insane. Um, and one of those things was the Emperor's Imperial Shuttle. Um... Right along with the ad at which I didn't get until my 30s uh, due to um, a friend of mine at the time. He just surprised me with it, with a, a Empire Strikes Back ad at I was like, oh, crying, and I was so happy. But um, the Emperor's Imperial Shuttle was so awesome, so cool. Return of the Jedi... Uh, you know, that was my... I saw it in theaters. I flipped out in theaters when I was watching this movie. Um, that was my thing, man. That's my favorite Star Wars movie to this day. Um, and that ship. I just love that ship. Um, and I wanted it so bad. And now it goes for an extreme amount of money. Loose and with box. It doesn't matter. You're still going to pay... A lot of money. Certainly more than I would pay myself. Um, if I were rich, I would do it. Uh, but I think that throughout the years, um, the Imperial Shuttle from Return of the Jedi has been on my list <laughs> year after year. I may never get it, but that's a, that's a, that's a holy grail. That's a white whale. Um... And that certainly would be at the top. Another, uh, now this, this is a line that a lot of people may not know, but 
It was cool. It was short-lived. The cartoon was awesome. It had a rad theme song. Um, and the toys were dope. And I had those toys. I had all of the good guys and all the bad guys. And that was it. And then they had some, like, they had the the, the PlayStation and, and they had some vehicles. But I never had that. I just had the figures. I'm talking about Bionic 6. Um, I would love to have that collection back in my life. I don't need them carded, um, but even loose out there in the wild, they are so expensive. But they were cool, man. They were die cast and plastic figures. Um, very poseable. Um, and, the, and the Bionic 6 was just a really cool cartoon. And cool, weird... Uh, underappreciated franchise and it was here and gone but I loved it and, and the theme song man look it up on YouTube theme, theme song is sweet um, so those that series I want the good I want all the good guys and I want the bad guys loose it would be great to just display them beautiful mm. um, another line that I didn't have a huge amount of these, but, you know, I probably had seven or eight of these. And uh, two of them in particular I had and would so love to have back in my collection. If this were a Sears 80s <laughs> wish book and I could... Um, sectors. Uh, I want general... Bride Axe with his Spider Flyer. And I want Dargon with Dragon Flyer. Now, what was cool about Sectors, it was, they were from Coleco, or maybe about this big. Um, but the creatures that they rode were puppets that you controlled. So your fingers were the feet of the creatures that they rode. And they had you know, saddles and everything, and you put the figures on, and they had wings that you could control the wings as well, and the mouths moved, and it was cool, man. <laughs> um, and the figures, if you, you got certain figures, and they would come with their own, like, bug little bug warriors as well. Um, and like I said, I had, like, seven or eight, maybe nine of those figures with the, the flying creatures that they rode. And I want them back. Um, again, it's an extremely expensive line to recollect, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, what do you do? Uh, that would that's that would be on my wish list. You know, complete. Um, then we got the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters. Such a huge thing for me, uh, and certainly the toys. Kenner was it. I have a video on here on the channel about my love of Kenner and the Kenner toys that I love, and Ghostbusters is on that list. Um, I had probably every line of that toy. Uh, not every character, uh, but from each line, I had something from that line. Um, and now, I'm just trying to get back the first series, maybe some of the second series of what I had. Uh, unfortunately, I gave a lot of those Ghostbusters figures to River when he was a toddler. Um, and he destroyed them. <laughs> so, um, But... Uh, slowly but surely, I am, I am getting the ones back that I had. And I still need to get Winston and Egon from the original line, the first four. I need those original Winston and Egons with their proton packs and their proton streams intact and the little ghosts that they came with. I have Peter and Ray, thanks to Sean Pinkerton. Um... And then I want Fearsome Flush, which was the <laughs> ghost <laughs> possessed toilet. Um, and then Granny Ghost, 
or I always called her Gruesome Granny. Um, but she was a possessed granny, and then you moved her up, and her giant maw came down, and her eyes came out, and her hair popped up, the hat and everything, and you know, because because Kenner was all about the the features. Once the initial line came out, then they started doing all these features, fright features, and things like that. Not just with Ghostbusters, but other other Kenner lines, they would do these feature products. Um, so I still need those. Uh, He-Man. Uh, I loved... I liked Skeletor, and I liked the, his uh, cadre of, you know, bumbling boobs. But for me, once She-Ra came out, and I saw her bad guys, forget about it. They were way cooler looking and a little, a little more menacing than Skeletor and, and his brood. So I love the evil horde and I want the evil horde back in my collection. I have a Grizzlor loose and I have a Grizzlor carded from back then. Um, I do have a Mantena loose, but he's not complete. So I basically want the evil horde as complete as possible. Um, if I'm able to score some of these still in their original boxes, in their carded boxes, hell yeah, great. Um, but Hordak is awesome. Um, so I, I want Hordak, I want Leech, I want Mantena, I want Modulok, I want a Horde Trooper, which I never had. Um, and I would take a Horde Trooper from the Modern line, any, any type of Horde Trooper. I want a Horde Trooper. I just gotta find him, man. It's tough. He-Man, again, He-Man is one of those properties where uh, some dealers are giving you loose He-Man for like $5, which is appropriate, and then some are doing it loose $50. You're out of your fucking mind. Carded, forget about it. It's just even more. Um, but I would love it. That carded Grizzlor I have was a miracle. It was only 25 bucks. And uh, I'm glad I scored that. Um, but they would be on my wish list. Of course, I've talked about these guys before. The Centurions. Power Extreme, man. Power Extreme! So Centurions uh, was a short-lived uh, cartoon, comic book, franchise, um toy line and I had pretty much most of all the Centurions but I loved them. I thought they were so dope uh, and I would like them back in my collection. I have two of them already but not with all their accoutrements because they had... I mean that was basically what you bought. You bought the core figures but then everything else that came out was accoutrements. was all the battle things that you could add to them. Um... And I just, I just want them all. Again, those are these, these lines, man. It, it, they're just not easy to find for cheap unless you're going to like a garage sale and uh, maybe a flea market and they just don't know what they have. Um, but I've never, ever come across anything like that. Anything that I've recollected has been through, you know, dealers at a, at a convention or uh, turd bags who own shops and really nostalgia tax the hell out of you. So, um, but that's neither here nor there. That's hither nor dither. That's just uh, that's just on my list, on my Sears wish book list. Um, also, this is this is modern, but I've wanted it since it came out. And I'll probably never get it because it's really expensive, but I would love to have the life-size E.T. that's out there. I believe it's like $500. Um, but I want it. It's so cool. I love E.T. And it would just be cool to have in the house. Like a, like a Han and Carbonite. <laughs> like a life-size Boba Fett. You know, things like that would be amazing. Um, you know, I, I would love to have the uh, the Gremlins puppets that are out there, the life-size Gremlins puppets. There's there's one that NECA made recently 
um, where you stick your hand right in the back of their head and you can and it looks like a straight up gremlin from the films and it's beautiful and detailed and everything they're so expensive man but I would love that stuff that stuff would be great uh, I mean Katie always says that the you know the house is just getting smaller and smaller because her and I <laughs> keep adding all this stuff so things that big she's always like yeah it'd be great but where the hell are we gonna put it we need a new house we need a new wing <laughs> you know <laughs> we ultimately at some point when we do decide to move which will be sometime in our lives this is not our forever home um, we want to have rooms that are designated for the fandoms right so we already have an 80s room upstairs, but I need that 80s room to be bigger. So we want an 80s room. We want a specific Star Wars room with all of our Star Wars stuff in there. We want a specific and bigger game room. Um, our home theater is pretty good. If we had a little more room, we could probably fit another you know, group of seats back there, which would be kind of cool to have couple tiers um, but yeah we just we just have so much stuff uh, but it doesn't you know it doesn't hurt to wish and that's what this is all about <laughs> your wish book um, but I mean so those are the those are the things that are sort of they're always on my mind. They're always, I mean, you've probably heard me talk over and over about these certain products, these franchises, and how I'm trying to get them back in my life. And clearly, talking for a couple of years about it, I haven't gotten these things back in my life. I'm getting closer to recollecting all of my Return of the Jedi stuff. And that's been fantastic because I've had a lot of, of friends and, and close uh, family actually picking those off for me which is fantastic um but man that that imperial shuttle one day oh saint crispin can you hear me i have been a good boy this year maybe possibly I'll give you a cat with your cookies and coke. <laughs> I don't think he's listening, folks. That's the curse of the sievage, pretty much. So, enough of those things that I'll never get. Let's talk about the thing that I do have. And that's deep, deep love for nostalgia. I was thinking about this the other day because um, a trailer came out recently. And that trailer seemed to really uh, bring about a sense of childhood glee to a lot of people. Um, I'm one of those people who... Now, let me say this. Let me stress this. I'm not a big trailer guy. Um, when it comes to marketing a film, I, I watch when it's if it's a big film, like a genre film that I'm really looking forward to. I only watch the first trailer or first teaser that is released, and that's it, uh, because I don't want to see anything. I'm also a visual person, and I love being shocked by visuals, not just what's happening in the story, but if there's something rad that's in a trailer and I see it I lose that awe in the theater in the theater experience so I don't want that I don't want to be spoiled by anything like that um, and they for those teasers or the first trailers they really don't show that much and it's usually from a <laughs> minuscule part of a two and a half hour movie you know so I'm like okay I'll just do that wet the appetite and that's all I need so um, the Ghostbusters 
They're calling it Ghostbusters Afterlife. I'm calling it Ghostbusters 3 because that's what it is. Um, it is in the continuity of the original Ghostbusters films. Uh, the original cast is in it. Um, so this trailer really like sparked a, a big nostalgia kick. And what I do sometimes is I don't know why I do it because I don't need to be validated for my feelings of joy and happiness, but sometimes I will watch uh, people reacting to trailers, right? And I know probably 90% of it is all fake for the, for the reaction, for the clickbait or what have you. But there's certain people that I watch that I know are genuine and I know um, that I feel would get a, give a very real and very honest reaction to. But across the board, this teaser trailer seems to be lighting up faces and hearts. <laughs> um, but then I saw some uh, things about, uh, you know, oh, they're just they're just playing on nostalgia. They're, they're just relying on nostalgia, blah, 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 blah. You know, you get it with the Star Wars community as well. Um, oh, they just do the, do, the, do the nostalgia, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I... I just, I guess I'm wondering what, what is wrong with nostalgia? Um, if it's, if these are the things that you loved from back then, and that's the, that's the stuff that you know and you love, um, why would you hate those things now? Uh, or hate that feeling that it's giving you now? Um, I guess I could understand maybe uh, do something different within the franchise or blah, 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 blah. But you got to understand, um, in order to sort of push whatever they're doing, they need to rely on a certain amount of nostalgia uh, to get your man-children in there in addition to trying to hook a younger audience um, because nine times out of ten for the most part they're not 100% going for you specifically certainly with trying to restart a franchise that was primarily for you as a kid or a teen that you watched back in the day um, so I don't, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm rambling and I'm not making a lot of sense, but I guess it comes down to who, I guess, who cares <laughs> how they do what they're doing or, or, or what's in the film when it comes to, say, fan service or nostalgia, as long as, I mean, it's making you happy. Because, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I guess it doesn't matter. For me, I really enjoy nostalgia. I embrace it. I find nothing wrong with it. Um, while I love living in the past, I'm also living now. There are things in this world that I quite enjoy now <laughs> um, that make it better to live in this life. Um, there are things entertainment-wise that are blowing things out of the water from back then, but I'll never stop loving those things that I loved from my childhood, from the 80s, from the best decade of all. Um, I don't think you have to bury that. I don't think you have to push that aside. I just see so much... Um, dislike for nostalgia and and things from the past. Um, I don't know. And again, I suppose why am I even trying to argue this case? Because it's not going to change anybody's point of view. It's not going to change their thoughts on it. Um, so maybe I'm just doing it to make a statement for me that 
I love it. <laughs> I embrace it, and I and I will never let it go. So it's a it's a big part of my life, um, and it's a big part of my happiness. I can function without these things, but I would rather not because it makes me happy and it makes me smile. And uh, there's too much cynicism. There's too much. Uh, hatred and, and anger in the world and so much gruesome shit going on in this world all, all together this this planet that we are fucking up and destroying and and civilization that we're just crumbling and blah 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 so you take those little things you take those fucking things that put a smile on your face and you hold them tight and you put them in the forefront um Whatever it is, uh, for me, a big part of it just happens to be 80s nostalgia and cartoons, toys, food, clothes, all of that, the music, movies. That, that is me, and, and it's a huge part of me, and, and I'll never let it go, and I think it's a good thing. And I encourage uh, you, you know, stuffy adults out there to, to rethink, rethink your your uh you know your stance on nostalgia because nine times out of ten you're probably going to smile when, when you think about something that you used to love you used to uh, uh covet um that smile means something that smile is important uh so i just i just think you know it's, it's a very good thing um and certainly for properties that are trying to come back into one's life um, and honestly a lot of these properties have never gone away they've just evolved and um, whether or not you like it uh, first and foremost it is about money um, half of it is about trying to nab the nostalgia people and half of it is trying to cater to a brand new audience um so i never really complain about things like that like there's a lot a lot of ghostbusters fans out there who seem to have forgotten that they were kids <laughs> when all of this was happening and now it you're you know for me i'm in my 40s personally I think it's awesome that they are trying to make it broader for families and kids and things of that nature. Anything like that, anything from my past where they are doing that, I get it. I understand. It is not 100% for me anymore. It just isn't. Um, you can either choose to go along for the ride or you can choose to be a baby and whine and complain because they're not doing exactly what you want them to do uh, now when you're, you know, as you're getting closer to death. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I think that that is so lost on our generation is that the, uh, we were kids when we fell in love with all this stuff. Transformers, Ghostbusters, Star Wars turtles what have you it's you know and then you get to that age and you expect it to be the same and you expect it to cater to you but it just isn't that way and it's not going to be that way but i think they give you enough um and i think they do try to change it up a bit um so that there's some appeasing going on on both sides um i don't know again my rambling is rambling, and you can take it or leave it. Um, uh, I'm not going to change anybody's mind. Um, but for me, I, I definitely I get it. I understand what they're doing. I understand what the studios are doing and the, and the, the companies are doing out there. Um, it, it works. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, some people might not like it, but for me, for the most part, these things that are coming back, uh, I have enjoyed. And if I haven't, then I've moved on. I'm just like, okay, that, that stinks. Oh, well. 
Um, but I, for one, am excited that we're getting another Ghostbusters. That Star Wars is continuing. Besides the Star Wa- Skywalker saga. Which is I'm so pumped for. But Star Wars is continuing. Um, Transformers is still out there. The Turtles are still out there. Bill and Ted are coming back. So excited for it. I just don't have that cynical instant, oh, it's going to be crap. Like, you see it, you hear about it. Oh, pff, why? Stupid. Why? Like, oh, why? Why not? Why not? Everyone has the power to see something, to not see something, to choose, to not choose. I choose to be positive. I choose to be, you know, in a, in a fun, happy, nostalgia spirit of it all. So bring it on. I say that all the time. Bring it on. Keep giving it. L- lay it on thick. Mask is going to come back at some point. Hell yeah. You know? Along with all these properties we love. He-Man. He-Man is coming back in a big way next year, 2020. It's like, bring it on. Because not only are you going to be doing entertainment as far as movies, television, cartoons, what have you, we're also getting more toys from all these things. And you may or may not like the toys, but they're giving you that opportunity to choose. And that's an awesome thing. And not just for us 40-somethings, but for the kids. For the kids, for them to get hooked on the same property. They might get hooked on that new version of whatever it is and then seek out the original. You know, I, I find it all a good thing and, and uh, I'm excited for the future of, of retro <laughs> modernism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This was a lot of rambling and hopefully uh, Zatchel can find some places to cut and, and to snip and because this was, you know, could be garbage to a lot of you, but uh, that's where I stand. And yeah, we are on the, as I said, we were on the verge of seeing the last of the Skywalker films. And I'm pumped. I can't wait. We got our Thursday night, 7 o'clock IMAX tickets. The whole family is going. Super excited. There will be tears. There will be cheering. I just, I can't wait. And we will talk about it more. Casey and I will definitely be talking about it. I might be doing a uh, live show in the next couple days. Maybe, possibly, I don't know when you'll see this, but it's, I will be doing something soon. Uh, and then Casey and I will be doing something right before Christmas, uh, a live show as well. Uh, but I think this might be the last episode episode up f- uh, until the new year. But again, we'll have, some, we'll have some live shows popping up, which will be great. And you can chat with us and we'll have some good discussions and whatnot. Um, but I also want to say real quick... Uh, On December 19th, it will be the end of this deal I got going on for the films that I make. Uh, You may not know, but I've been making comedy horror films for almost 30 years. Um, I have a Christmas deal going on where you can get um, six of my films for $50 uh, or 12 of my films for $100, 24 of my films for $200, and then 46 of my films for $300. I've made a lot of movies, folks. Um, And if you want to see a list of all the flicks that I've made and maybe pick them out, uh, you can go to warlockhomevideo at gmail.com and ask for that list. I will give it to you, and I'll give you uh, the info on how you can get them. But... um, all the orders, every Christmas deal that I do every year, it goes for Christmas presents for my friends and family, and we are running out of time. <laughs> so please, if you love schlocky, comedy, horror, weirdness, absurdity, uh, and you want to give my stuff a shot and, and support true independent artists, uh, let me know, contact me, and we'll give you that list and all that stuff. And uh, I want to wish you all a, a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. And I hope you enjoyed Crap from the 80s this year. And again, we'll be on the live shows, but um, I appreciate your support. We are, we are almost there at 600 subscribers, which is amazing. It's so cool, so cool. 
So spread the word. If, you, if you're a nostalgia junkie, if you know some friends who are in the same boat, love that stuff, spread the channel. If you like any of the shows that we have on here, give us a like. Talk to us. We love talking nostalgia and geeky stuff with everybody. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you, one and all. And, uh, and uh, thank you to Zatchel, our producer, who has been stepping up the production of this show and, and the editing and, and the camera work and um, the, the sheer amount of cream that is sprayed over all of us every show. It's, it's simply amazing and it tastes delicious and it's succulent even. Uh, but so I want to thank Zatchel and um, thank you all. Merry Christmas! Feliz Navidad! Das Grünlich, 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 Grünlich,